Good afternoon. I am Edward Gonzalez and this is a second video on international relations. This time the topic is liberalism, the second, a second major perspective to view the world. On my last video I spoke of realism, which is viewed as the major theory to see the world by most academics and political leaders at, in the modern era. But the liberalist theory of international relations has become increasingly common as an alternative to the realist perspective. In realism, the world is seen as a, a zero-sum game where countries compete with each other and where common goals are impossible. A, an accomplishment of a country comes at the expense of another country, or another state as we call them. For liberals though, in, in liberalism, the world can be a non-zero-sum game where you can accomplish goals without doing it at the expense of your neighbors. Another main point, liberalism has a more positive view of human nature. In realism, we see human nature as evil, or at, least, or at least very unreliable, that we cannot depend on the goodness of people's, be on, on the goodness of people to create a better world. Liberalism sees it as more positive. They believe that people are not bad, that they can be good, and that's why we can create collaborations between people. This is their main argument. If people can live in peace in local communities or even within a state, why cannot we apply? Why can't we apply this to the bigger international arena and live with, and have our countries live in peace with each other? So they have three ways of creating peace. One is democratic peace theory. The idea that it, that democratic countries do not go at war with each other, and this is based on actual observations. So far, no democracy has fought against the democracy. So the assumption is, if most countries in the world, if not all the countries in the world, become democratic republics, there will, there will be no more wars. A second, main cons a second main idea of liberalism is that if countries, is globalism, if a country is interconnected with another, either politically or economically, there is a less probability that they will go to war with each other. And the reasoning is sound. If you are in an alliance, for money or for de defense with your neighbor or a country in, in another continent, it will be against your interest to get into a fight with them. You will not want to have a war with that country because you will also injure yourself. And the third main concept of how to create peace in liberalism is the international organizations. They see them as very important now in, as a way for countries to come to agreements and solve disputes without going to war. For example, like the United Nations or the European Union, a ways for countries to collaborate without having to attack each other. Now, liberalism has its roots in the past. It's not a modern theory, these are ideas that have always been there. But it's just now that they have recently become accepted by a huge amount of people to actually affect how politics works. Now, I would like to trace modern liberalism to the ideas of to one of the founders of it, Immanuel Kant, who in 1795 wrote an essay called <clears throat> Perpetual Peace, a philosophical sketch, where he wrote of a world that was united by a league of nations, where there had no standing armies, there were no secret agreements, and countries were going to collaborate for a more peaceful world as republics. This concept of a league of nations was eventually turned into reality by the end of the First World War based on Woodrow Wilson's 14 points speech to Congress in June 8, 1918, where he mentioned most of the points of Kant saying about, talking about countries not having secret alliances and creating an organization where the world could be at peace. Unfortunately, it did not work, as World War II attests. But, by 1948, the world decided to give liberalism a new, another chance, creating the United Nations, which is now one of the, which is now the biggest international organization with all countries of the world as members, states. Now, the reason why liberalism is so important is because we have some theories of it that are affecting the world. If liberalism is actually correct, then our, then our world will be more peaceful if we decide to get rid of realist, as, as the realist perspective. Because then we will go towards a more collaborative view of the world. Instead of looking at them as, or, uh, instead of looking at other countries as our enemies, we should be looking at them as our allies. And if liberalism theory is correct, then we do have to spread democracy to other countries of the world. 
because that will mean that there will be less conflict. Maybe history will tell us if, liber if the liberal perspective is correct. If democratic peace theory works or not, we'll, we'll get to find out. Or maybe war did not break out between democracies because democratic republics are relatively new. Only history will tell how real this, how complete this theory really is. Thank you.